everybody i'm going to have a tutorial on how to do a youtube collaboration and here's what you need to do a collaboration obviously you need a collaborator but you need a way to record yourself you need a way to watch what you're responding to as you record yourself that's the tricky part and a way to edit everything together to find a collaborator usually just reach out and talk to somebody leave a comment check their about tab or their social media and just say hey when you talk to your collaborator, make a plan. That usually means someone needs to go first, make a video, and then the other person is going to respond or play along with or something like that with the first video. Also make sure you talk about file formats. If you need something specific for video or audio, depending on what you're collaborating on, make sure you talk about that in the beginning. Because when you get near the end of the project and you realize, oh my gosh, my software doesn't like this file type, that is a little stressful. Also talk about how you're going to share files. I use Google Drive. It's free, it's multi-platform. There are many other options too, like Dropbox, WeTransfer, and some other ones. But decide how you want to share files with each other. Now it's time for someone to make the first video, and let's pretend that this is it. You need to think about, as you get started, how you want the ending product to be. So if I am in the middle of my shot, that's going to require a lot more editing to to squeeze this and crop it out, as opposed to if I was off to the side or something like that. If you do a shot like this, obviously the other person is going to be edited in right there. And in the editing software, it's usually really easy just to crop this off and then have the other person's video in another track right there. A couple other details to talk about is lighting. If one person is well lit and the other person is kind of like in a dark room or something like that, that's going to make it look strange. When doing musical collaborations, it's very common to record your audio separately from your video. So then you have it in a studio program and you can add effects and produce it and do things like that. Then you have a better sounding end product. A couple things to think about is how are you going to synchronize your audio and video later? Depending on how you're working on the video editing part, it can get really, really tedious trying to zoom in and find a frame where you're strumming a chord, singing a note doing something and lining that up with audio. So think about that and see if you can find an identifying part of the audio that will be easy to match up with a part in the video. I mentioned file formats before, so make sure with the other person that they have a way to play or work with the files that you're sending them. For me, the trickiest part of doing a collaboration is making sure that I have a way to watch and listen to whatever it is I'm playing to. Since I usually do musical collaborations, it's really, really important to hear what the other person is doing so you can play along with it. Now, of course, you can use headphones. And obviously, you have to think about how does my hair look, but how do you look on camera whenever you wear headphones and things? And how comfortable is it to have headphones on as you're performing or doing whatever it is you're doing? You could also use earbuds. And what I do is I put them in one ear and then try to keep my head turned as much as possible. And since I move around a lot when I talk or play or whatever it is I'm doing, I just try to remember, hey, try not to turn my head too much. And I use the ones with cords and I just run them down the back of my shirt or something like that. It's, it's pretty easy to do. Now for me, how I listen or hear whatever it is I'm doing, I happen to have a Chromebook. And I'll have the video or audio or whatever it is on my Chromebook. And I usually put it in my Google Drive and if we're sharing things on Google Drive, that just makes it easier. From Google Drive, you can play video and audio. There's a player built into that, and that makes it really easy. Whoever makes the first video, it's really important that you leave some lead in time because it's really difficult to reach off camera, hit play on something, get back in frame, and be ready to do whatever it is you're doing. So let's edit this together. I have my video clips in the editor, and what you're looking for is an editor that has multiple video channels. I'm going to show you a couple different ways that you can put this together. I am using Vegas Movie Studio and iMovie, KindMaster, and Wii Video are all set up in a similar type of way. What I do before I even worry about synchronizing my videos is I try to get the screen set up, like how do I want things to look visually? Because once you have that set, then you can work on synchronizing, and that's usually a good order to work from. So right now, if I mute out this video, you're going to see how they switch. And what I need to do is crop and do some work on this top video. In your video editor, usually these channels are in order of priority, meaning this video will be on top of the ones below it, kind of like you set them in a stack. Since this bottom video 
already has a place designated for the other video. I'm going to see if I cannot edit that one at all and just edit this one channel. A lot of times people will use the pan and cropping function, but this doesn't always work as you might think it would because when you squeeze it, yeah, you can start to see the other video, but then it's hard to move over and you're stuck with a different window and that's not terribly helpful. So let's try something else. If you're using different software than I am, this next part is going to be different, but you need to find the crop function. For me, it's in my effects. Let's look through, find crop. Notice when we crop it, it just essentially removes the left side of that video. So what we need to do is just reposition it. And we can do that with the pan crop function. Go in and just move it on over. There we go. That's one way to do this. Another option besides just cropping and setting things up is using the picture in picture function. So with picture in picture, you might have a default setting, but you just open that up and once you get the spacing set up, you probably need to crop it. There we go. To me, the only difference between using picture in picture besides just cropping it in general is it usually takes a little bit longer to render as it's a separate effect. In either case, you have the videos set up and then you can move them to synchronize them according to the audio. In your software, you can zoom in and see the waveforms and match them up. So if there's a certain part of the song where something loud happens, you're going to see that and then you can line up the different takes accordingly. This tutorial just covers the basics of how do you get a collaboration going with someone. You should be able to see how you could take some of the ideas if you had three people, multiple video takes or something like that. You're essentially is doing the same thing repeatedly. You get a video take, you share it with somebody, someone plays along, they share it back with you, and then you put it all together and work to synchronize it and try to make sure the ending product looks pretty cool. If you have questions about anything in this video, make sure you ask in the comments, and if I can't answer it for you, I'm sure someone else can. My collaborator keeps hiding.